Hi, my name's Chris, I'm the Education Officer at Lion Regis Museum, and I think Paddy's told you a little bit about the fossils. I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the museum, a little bit about the history of the uh, um, famous geologists from around the line, and the most famous one, without any doubt, is Mary Anning. And our big link to Mary Anning is the museum itself is built on the site of Mary's original house. So it's not the same building, the building she would have lived in would have looked like this. And this is the, the, the uh, facing uh, the, the uh, street view of the house. Mary, very, very poor lady, she had a, a struggle in her early life, and the house looks a little bit grand. And it was originally a Georgian building, and it was built backing onto the sea. The sea is now further out from the museum than it used to be. They've uh, extended the land slightly. And Mary's house at the back used to have waves breaking over it. It was wet, it was damp. And the original builder of the house didn't want to live in it, and the Anning family got it for a very low rent, which suited them very well, but it wasn't an ideal place to live. And Mary stayed in this site till, 1920, uh, till 1826, and then in 1826 Mary moved to a better shop further up the main street. Now, I'll show you another interesting fact about the museum, another historical link. I'll bring you back down here. That in. We've made a feature of the blind at the end of the museum, and this is a painting by Henry Della Beach from 1830, and it shows what Lyon would have been like, as he thought, during the Jurassic period about 200 million years ago. And as far as we know, this is the first attempt anywhere in the world to reconstruct an ancient environment based on the fossil evidence, and a lot of the evidence came from specimens that were found by Mary Annie. And I'm sure Paddy mentioned to you the fish, the pedium, we've got a lovely example of that in the museum. And there's his drawing of what he thinks the pedium looks like. You've got a long-snouted ichthyosaur, tendulosteris, eating that. We found poo, the coprolites from ichthyosaurs with fish scales in them. And Del Beach included everything. He even included the fossil poos, or the poos falling down through the water from some of the animals, because they're another fossil that we found. And interestingly, this is the uh, first version done of Jury Articula, ancient Dorsetshire. He did a later version where he missed the, the, the copper lights off, missed off the poos. Um, a lot of information on it is still accurate today, but there are some things that we now know to be wrong. The ichthyosaur tails look like those of crocodiles. And when they first found ichthyosaurs, all they found was the bones going along into the tail, and the jaws and the head looked very like a crocodile, and they supposed that probably the tail looked exactly the same. Later, fossils were found in Germany, places like Holzmarten. They found that the backbone bends down in the bottom of the tail, and they found the black bacterial mat that arced the outline of the animal's flesh. So they discovered that it had a, a tail that was more, more fish-like. Um, they've got other things that they've got right. Land is in the background. We know land was near line, we get fossil insects, we get fossil wood, we get occasional dinosaurs, Scalidosaurus. So land was close by, so he's got that correct. But there's no Scalidosaur, there's no dinosaur on the original fossil because it wasn't found until after the painting was done. And something else about science, not only do we um, change our opinions on things if new evidence comes to light, but new things are found. And the local artist, Richard Bisley, did a very nice modern drawing of Duria and he's corrected the ichthyosaur tails and he's put Scalidosaurus on land and he's on with a few things. And the nice thing that we've also got about Mary Anning in this drawing is up at the top we've got the pterosaurs, Dimorphodon macronics. And everybody knows about Mary and Joseph finding the ichthyosaur. Some people know about them finding the plesiosaur. Not many people are aware that she found the first pterosaur outside of Germany and the second species to be found. These creatures are probably dimorphodon macronics. I told you a little bit about Henry de, de la Beach, who painted Jury Antiqua. Um, he became a famous geologist, he founded the British Geological Survey, but he isn't the only famous geologist associated with Lyme. We've also got William Buckland, and Buckland was Dean of Westminster, first professor of geology at Oxford, read, reader in mineralogy there, and he knew Mary Anning, he went collecting with Mary Anning, and lived in the area for a period of time, and he made some interesting discoveries, and he published a paper about the coprolites, the fossil poo. And he was particularly taken by some of the coprolites we find have a spine.
spiral twist, a spiral shape to them. And he wanted to know what actually caused this. And he thought about it, and eventually he thought he'd figured it out. But in science, you need proof. You need to actually show what, what you think is likely to be the case. And he didn't use computer modeling or anything like that. He went back to basics. He decided that these spiral cockroaches were probably from sharks and bays, cartilaginous fish. So he got a cartilaginous fish, dogfish, something like that, off a large shark. And he got a big syringe and he washed out the intestine, the gut. And then he filled the syringe up with plaster and he injected the plaster into the intestine. And he made a cast of the intestine. And then he cut the shark open, took out the cast, cleaned it up. And we have one of the casts here. And when he made a cast of the gut, sharks have a spiral valve on the gut. And you get a spiral twist to the cast of the poo inside the gut. And it was exactly the same as what you get on the phosphocoprolites. So we think that when you find a coprolite with a spiral twist to it, it's from a shark or a ray or a creature like that. And just while we're here looking at this case, there's another nice specimen at the back. And a little bit hard to see, but you've got a long rectangular slab of shale. And what it is, is a fossil squid holding a fish. The black sort of elongate pear shape is the ink sac of the squid. The internal skeleton would have been out of the block a little bit to that side, but what we have beautifully preserved at the front is little lines of black dots, and the black dots are the little hooks on the tentacle of the squid, and going head first between the tentacles is a small polydophorous fish, and it's died holding a fish. And the way we think that happened, possibly, is the little squid was swimming along in the water, and often sat lying, the sea floor was anoxic, it was stagnant. And there was maybe a kill of fish, and there was dead fish lying in the stagnant water on the sea floor, and the little squid could smell them, and it dived down into deep water, grabbed one of the dead fish, and started to eat it, because of no oxygen in the water. So it couldn't breathe, and it was eating its fish, and eventually it died, but it still has the fish touching its tentacles. So quite a, a nice specimen that just gives you a little snapshot of a brief moment in the Jurassic Seas nearly 200 million years ago.